Good morning, everyone. In the next 10 minutes or so, I'd like to show you a very simple process that you can follow every single Sunday to try and build a watch list of stocks that you'd like to trade for the next week. Now, our watch list is really comprised of two different conditions. The first is these stocks need to be oversold. Uh, that's either via our daily or weekly time frame chart, really a longer time frame chart. For us, oversold means using our edge signals indicator, and that's a free indicator for all volatility box members. If you don't have access to this, you can use something like a stochastics or an RSI, but you may need to overlay that with uh, multiple indicators to really make sure you filter out all of the noise and all of the junk. Now, once we have that, we'd also like to make sure we have a bullish market pulse. So really, logically speaking here, the idea here is give me a list of stocks in which we're currently oversold or really uh, in layman terms, pulling back where we have an overall longer term bullish trend that's using the market pulse. The market pulse is a free indicator. I'll also link that in the description box in case you don't already have it. Now, once we have those lists of stocks, we'll run it through our short interest scanner with the idea of focusing in on stocks that have high short interest with high meaning greater than 10%. You'll see just how easy this process is, especially once you start to use things like ThingScript code, which we'll walk through in just a second, along with things like our short interest scanner, which allows you to really bulk analyze a group of stocks. Now, once we have our watch list of stocks, we also have a well-defined entry trigger list that we're looking at. And this really uh, happens anytime Monday through Friday. For our entry trigger, we're looking at an intraday time frame chart, really anywhere between a one minute to a 30 minute or even greater time frame chart. You can scale that based off of how aggressive you are in terms of trading. But based off of that, off of an intraday time frame chart, we see uh, either a slingshot squeeze or a squeeze signal. Both of these are overlaying the edge signals along with squeeze conditions. So this is really to help you time entries in the squeeze. You know that you have the squeeze supporting the overall idea of a bullish move. And then we again have the same trend being supported with our market pulse. If you'd like to see an example of this entire process from start to finish, so that's the idea of building a watch list all the way down to specific entry triggers, examples of what this looks like, we built a previous playlist where we repeated this process once before on a Sunday, and we made videos throughout the week all the way from Monday through Friday, capturing different uh, actual triggers that occurred for our watch list. So you can get an idea of what to expect, entries, targets, stops, all of that good stuff from that playlist. In this video, we'll focus on building the watch list for this upcoming week. All right, so let's get started with that. We'll come into Thinkorswim first. Now, if we start off by coming into our scan tab, here I already have an edge signal scan loaded in. Again, for all volatility box members, you should have access to this. I also have a few simple uh, conditions, a volume condition, 500,000 or greater, and the stock price needs to be at least 10 bucks. We're scanning in weeklies. Let's go ahead and run the scan. We have 64 results. I can save this as a watch list here. And now is where the beauty of ThingScript, technology, Excel, our scanner, everything really starts to come together. You'll see just how quickly we go from 64 results down to a very small list, which is going to be our watch list. So I'll name this something like May 16th watch list. We'll click save. Now let me load this in on the left hand side. So I'll say May 16th watch list. And here I have a customs quote script. This is a market pulse script. This is again free for all volatility box members. We build it inside of the squeeze course where you can now filter out very easily where we have a bullish market pulse. So we're focused on only accumulation. That's the gray all the way up to acceleration. That's the green. So I can copy paste this entire list. Click control C. We'll come in and paste this into a new Excel sheet. Now I can use Excel to create a comma separated list. So I'll say equals a one and, and we'll add in a comma. And then now I can apply this to all of these uh, rows, copy paste this list, come into our short interest scanner. This is inside of our stock volatility box platform, paste in that list, click search. And just like that, now you have a list of all of the stocks in which we have a bullish market pulse, a uh, bullish edge signal, along with short interest, which we said we wanted to see greater than 10%. So we went from that list of 64 down to one, two, three, four in what, less than a minute, I would say. So now let's start by adding all of the stocks that look interesting to our dashboard. And for us, that's these four double digit figures. And now I can come into our dashboard and refresh the dashboard and we should see all four of those stocks. Now let's take a look at what this looks like on charts. So we'll start with the Rite Aid. Now Rite Aid here, you'll see does technically have a stage of accumulation. But for the most part here, most recently, we've had a bearish market pulse. So let's go ahead and skip Rite Aid. That does not meet our rules of having a bullish market pulse. 
Next up, we have American Airlines. American Airlines, most recently, bearish market pulse as well. Now we have, next up, Camping World Holdings. This looks much better here. Camping World Holdings, most recently, we had a bullish market pulse. We also have a squeeze signal most recently. Uh, we have earnings behind us. Everything here looks good. Camping World Holdings would be a stock that remains on our dashboard as we continue to monitor this week. So I can remove American Airlines so far. We can remove Rite Aid. Now let's take a look at Macy's. So if I load in Macy's, Macy's here as well, most recently here, a bullish market pulse. We do have earnings coming up, so that's one thing we'd like to be wary of. No entry before earnings, but we can leave it on our dashboard just to try and track it in case we have a better entry price after earnings comes around. Or if we have some sort of volatility with earnings in Macy's, we're using our conservative models, we have an opportunity to enter at our LE price, which is our long entry. So that's really Macy's and Camping World Holdings. And just like that, we went from a list of 64 total stocks that we had. These were stocks in which we currently have an oversold condition off of the daily time frame chart. We narrowed it down using our custom quote script in less than a few seconds, focusing in on places only where we had at least accumulation for our market stage, if not acceleration. Then we plug those stocks into our short interest scanner here to try and narrow that down. We had four total stocks that looked interesting that met all of our rules. And from those four stocks, we've narrowed it down to two. Camping World Holdings, where we're looking for an intraday time frame one minute trigger, at least uh, using our slingshot squeeze or squeeze signals. And then Macy's, where we're looking for some interesting earnings volatility if we get that, where if we have an opportunity to buy the dip at the LE levels using our conservative models after earnings, I think that's where that would be fairly interesting for Macy's. All right, hope this helps to give you an idea of a repeatable process. Each Sunday, you'll find you have a different number of stocks that you can focus on for that upcoming week, but taking a few minutes out of your Sunday to do this homework allows you to profit throughout the week. All right, take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and we'll see you in the next update.